Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we're going to discuss when and where we could see Tropical Storm Debbie form in the next couple of days. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltobits.com for Monday, July 22nd, 2024. We have two tropical waves that we're monitoring, one over Central America and one in the middle of the main development region by our purple arrows. The pink arrows indicating a potential another tropical wave, but it's associated with the monsoon trough at the moment. And then we have two surface troughs that are off the east coast of Florida, as well as just outside of the Caribbean islands in our, by our red arrows. And you can see those uh, tropical waves and those surface troughs uh, associated with our uh, vorticity map here, which is like an x-ray of the atmosphere. So you can see their spin and energy associated with each of them that I've highlighted by our red boxes. But as you can see, none of them are showing signs of any kind of development, which the National Hurricane Center is expect not expecting anything over the next seven days. So where could we see tropical development and when? So let's look at the GFS model and see what we can figure out. So here's the GFS model, cyclonic vorticity. Uh, again, this is about a thousand feet up from the surface of the atmosphere. It shows the spin and energy of our concentrated tropical waves and surface troughs. And purple again is our waves. Red is the surface trough and pink is the monsoon trough, which is a stretched out, uh, almost wave-like structure. Now we are still dealing with a large amount of wind shear across the, the Atlantic Basin, as you can see with all the yellows, reds, and oranges. And we also have a round of Saharan dust moving through the Eastern Caribbean at the moment and uh, all the brown is indicating the Saharan air layer as well with a little bit of dust with it. So let's move this forward to five days from now to Saturday, July 27th. And we can see our Bermuda Azores high in the middle of our page there, stretching out with a long piece of uh, blocking power, keeping our tropical waves moving through the Caribbean and not really coming up the east coast of the United States. And then we still, those are our two purple hexagons. We also have a larger pink hexagon. That's still our monsoon trough extending off the coast of Africa, where our tropical waves are coming from. And as you can see, we still have a large amount of wind shear through the next five days. So that's why National Hurricane Center is not expecting any development over the next seven days. And along with the wind shear, we still have the Saharan air layer playing a big part in keeping these tropical waves barren of any thunderstorm activity, as you can see here. They're very dry as they move through the Caribbean. So localized thunderstorms are possible, but overall organization into anything tropical is unlikely at this point. So let's move this out another five days. So now we're 10 days out to the beginning of August on Thursday, August 1st. And we have a pink hexagon off the coast of Africa, still a monsoon trough. But you can see there's a little bit of a piece of vorticity off the southeast coast of the United States. That's another tropical wave that is going around our Bermuda Azores high. And as I discussed in a previous video, that high pressure acts like a mountain. And we have a cold front extending off from the Great Lakes down into the Mississippi Valley of the United States that's so allowing a pathway for this tropical wave to move around the Bermuda Azores High and up the East Coast. But we're not seeing much development from it. But the potential is there. And let me show you why. So let's move to the 200 millibar level of the atmosphere. This is where the jets fly. It's about 32,000 feet high in the air. And you see right where our purple hexagon is off the Southeast Coast of the United States, an upper level ridge. That is usually key for tropical development for proper outflow in the upper levels of the atmosphere. And that disperses the air in the upper levels. And when that happens, it has to be air to 
move into that region that's losing air. So you have convergence at the lower levels of the atmosphere, which is why you have that tight vorticity signature you saw in the previous slide. That also creates a low wind shear environment. As you can see here, right off the east coast of the United States, that light blue area. So potentially, if any tropical waves moves into this region in 10 days, but this is just one model run, this area would be conducive for tropical development, along with the very warm Gulf Stream underneath. So it's an area that we're going to need to monitor. But also the Caribbean and the western portions of the main development region will have similar scenarios. But right now, if we look at the moisture content, those areas would be dry, whereas that tropical wave does have some moisture with it, and you need that moisture to create thunderstorms. So it's something that we'll monitor. If we look at the European model, pretty much same thing. Looking at the East Coast with that tropical wave moving through, maybe something coming off the East Coast of the United States is possible as well, like a mid-latitude cyclone. Uh, developing into something subtropical. If we look at the multiple model runs, our ensemble models, you can see the support is lacking for any tropical development, but the European model does suggest maybe something coming out of the tropics and going around our Bermuda Azores High or something coming off the East Coast is possible, but support is still lacking. It's only a couple of models showing it, as you can see. Now, the, what we're really going to be looking for is this potential for tropical development to increase once we get into the month of August. So that last slide was showing August 1st. That's as far as the GFS uh, relic and European model can go congruently. If we look at the long-term forecast going beyond that another week in, to about August 6th, Climate Prediction Center is saying we could see a 20% chance of development in the western portions of the main development region into the eastern and central Caribbean. And why is that? Well, we're going to see our eastern uh, MJO start creating a lot of tropical weeds coming off the coast of Africa with that increasing green that you see on your left side of your screen. We have a rising air coming on the right side of your screen coming into the Atlantic Basin. That will be more conducive for tropical development. And our diagonal uh, bar graph here is showing a convectively coupled Kelvin wave coming around August 1st into this region, the Gulf of Mexico, Eastern Caribbean, and off the east coast of the United States. So that's why we'll keep an eye on that region for possible development, as I have noted here on our tropical weather forecast map. So end of July into early August, this region will start monitoring for when we could potentially see a tropical wave move into a more favorable environment, wind shear will decrease. With time, as we get to the month of August, the Saharan air will and dust will start to subside by the time we get to August, so this would be prime territory for possible tropical development, hopefully nothing like we saw with Beryl. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather. I'd like to give a shout out to Hurricane Dave for donating to our last video, so thank you very much. And if you would like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, Hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.